Perhaps you've been asked to journalize a discount no transaction such as this one. This is our example in the video prior to this one as well as the one prior to that where we calculated the APR and the discount rate. And then in the second video, we had worked up the horizontal model showing the transactions, but yet you might also have to journalize these transactions and not sure what to do. Well, I'm going to solve that problem for you because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to make this simple and easy for you to understand how to journalize this transaction. In this one, we've got a business signs a promissory note for $20,000 payable to the bank in five months from today. The proceeds of the note were $19,100. In other words, this is a discount note. If you want to see the first video in the series on this, I've linked it up here. So take a look at that to start out and then take a look at the video that I have following that, which I've also linked up here where we show the horizontal model for this transaction. Now let's go ahead and journalize these entries, including the signing of the promissory note. Let's show how the payments, so-called payments would be made if they are uh, accrued monthly. And those would be adjusting entries that I'm going to demonstrate. And then finally, when the note is paid off at the end of five months. So I'm going to show how to journalize all of those. And if you find information like this helpful, please go ahead and smash the like button. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm and it'll get this information out to more folks that need to understand this type of accounting. All right, so I always like to use my T accounts like this because that's going to make it much simpler to understand the transactions. And then from the T accounts, I can then turn it into a journal entries. All right. So I definitely recommend this. I know many folks skip this step, but when it gets very complex, they may get lost. So the first thing we're doing is we're signing the promissory note and receiving the initial proceeds of $19,100. I like to start with cash. So I'm going to have a T account here for cash and that is an asset. So we know that it's going to increase with debits and decrease with credits. The other account that might be involved in this is notes payable. Notes payable, of course, is a liability. It's something that the company owes. So that is going to increase with credits and decrease with debits. We're going to receive $19,100 cash. So our cash is going to go up by $19,100. So I'm going to debit $19,100 to cash. We sign a promissory note for $20,000. That means that our liabilities have increased by $20,000. So I'm going to go ahead and credit notes payable for $20,000. But because this is a discount notes payable, that is a difference between the amount of cash received and the amount of cash or amount of liability we've taken on. That is because the interest is prepaid uh, by the reduced or discount amount of the cash received. So as you know, with double entering accounting, we have to have our debits equal our credits. And in this point, our debits do not equal our credits. So we need another account. And we discussed this in the last video. And that account is called discount on notes payable. Discount on notes payable. And that is a contra liability account. In other words, it's going to be offsetting this liability over here. And the difference between this and this we know is $900, right? We've already done that in the prior videos. You can just subtract the 19,100 from the 20,000 and we have a $900 difference. And so our debits are $900 short of our credits. So we're going to have another debit here for $900. And now our debits and our credits balance. 
So let's show that as a journal entry. And so we can have a journal entry that is, and we always show our debits before our credits. So we're going to debit cash for $19,100. And then we're going to also debit our discount on notes payable And I'm going to abbreviate notes payables NP, and that's going to be an additional $900 here. And so we have $20,000 worth of debits. We need a credit. So we're going to credit notes payable, and our credits are always indented. And over here, we're going to put $20,000. So that's our first journal entry. And you can see that it our debits are equal to our credits. And we can use that as our journal entry. Now, as time goes on, each month, and there's five months involved here, we're going to amortize this note payable. In other words, we're going to have adjusting entries to show the interest that is um, being expensed every month. So we need another T account, and this one is going to be for interest expense. And interest expense, we're going to be debiting it to increase it. If you were going to decrease an interest expense, you're going to credit it. But interest expense is one of those income statement accounts. Since we have $900 worth of interest we're paying, and it's over five months, if you put that into the calculator, $900 divided by five months, we have $180 per month as our interest expense. So at the end of the first month, I'm going to expense $180 that's month number one. And where do we, what's our credit? We don't want to credit cash because we're not actually writing a check for $180. That is already been prepaid. So there will be no change to cash. We can't change notes payable because we still owe the $20,000 and we don't want to credit $20,000. We don't want to credit the notes payable because that would increase the amount we owe. We've prepaid this, so we're going to use our discounts on notes payable. And that's for, we're going to do our discount notes payable. So our credit is going to be to that. It's going to reduce our discount on notes payable. So our transaction for that would look like this. Let's go ahead and move this down and we're going to journalize that transaction. I'm going to debit interest expense for $180. And I'm going to credit discount on, and again, I'm going to abbreviate notes payables NP, and that's going to be $180. Our debits and credits balance. So that is that transaction for month number one. The same transaction occurs for the next four months. So it's a total of five months. So month two, 180, and two, 180. Month three, 180, 180. Month four, 180. and month five. So each of the months, the bookkeeper, the accountant, the business owner, somebody's going to be making these journal entries just like we did for the entire, um, for that interest that is being accrued, that interest expense that's being accrued each month. If you notice, this adds up to $900. So at the end of the year, we'll have an interest expense of $900 associated with this note. On this side, also, if you were to add it up, these add up to 
$900. So we have $900, $900 on a debit, $900 on a credit, and therefore this discount on notes payable has been completely amortized and that goes to zero. So we have $900 worth of interest expense. Our discount on note payable is zero. The last transaction is at the end of the five months, it is time to pay off the notes payable. The full $20,000 is owed, so we have to write a check or transfer $20,000 cash. So we're gonna credit our cash for $20,000, and we're gonna debit our notes payable for the $20,000 here. Our debits and credits balance, this note's payable, goes to zero because we don't owe it anymore, and our cash is reduced by the $19,100 that was originally borrowed, plus the $900 interest expense, which is now paid in cash at this point. So that final journal entry is going to look like this. We're going to debit notes payable. We always start with debit. And we're going to credit our cash for $20,000. And that wraps up this series of transactions. I hope you found this helpful. If you have, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel to get more information like this because there's a lot more to learn. You're just scratching the surface with this and I'm gonna walk you through every step of the way. Until next time, keep your grade alive and subscribe. Thank you.